Perfect. Introduction to fractions. So what is a fraction? We say a fraction is a number that can be written as as A over B, where A and B are whole numbers, not decimals, whole numbers, where A and B Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Our whole numbers, yep. And the other thing to remember, B cannot be zero. You can't divide by zero. You heard me probably, or you're going to hear me say, zero in the bottom is a problem. I'm going to say that more than once. <coughs> zero on the bottom is a problem. That's one of the things I say all the time, so you can quote me on that, because I don't think anyone used that. But zero on the bottom is a problem. So when you take like a five, is that a fraction? No. But can I make the five a fraction? Yeah. I can write the five, five over what? One, are they both whole numbers? Yes. They are whole numbers, and notice the bottom is not a zero. Two-third is a fraction. Four-fifth is a fraction. Zero is a fraction because you can write the zero, zero over one, zero over two, zero over five, any number you want to, as long as the bottom is not zero. So all of these are fractions. So the fraction actually, when you look at it, it has three parts. It has the top, which we call numerator there. It has a bottom, which we call denominator. And it has that line between them, which is called what? The fraction line. That's what a fraction is. Notice, for example, you can't, when you write a fraction, it says, a fraction is a number that can be written as A over B, where A and B are whole numbers. Right now, we didn't cover decimals, so we don't discuss decimals. Because someone might say, what about um, 1.2 over 2.3? We'll get to that. We're only dealing with positive numbers. We didn't even discuss negative numbers yet. Whole numbers is zero. One, two, three, four, five. So that doesn't mean you can have a negative number, you can have a decimal. You can, but we gotta clean them too. So what does the fraction mean when you see it? Here's an example. You leave it in the morning, or you know what? I, I got it. On the way to school, you decide, you know what? I'm gonna stop at Dunkin' Donuts and get a dozen donuts for the class. My friends in the class. Ah, uh, come on. I was about to make something else a picture, but here we go. So you got to, you stop at Dunkin' Donuts, and you ask for a box of donuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve donuts. And you decide you're gonna take them to school, but you're driving, looking at that donuts, because, oh, that looks really good. There's a Boston cream one. So you reach in, you grab it and eat it. So this is gone. You ate it. Ah, oh, look at that one. That's a chocolate frosted one. Oh, that looks good too. Gone. Ate it too. Look at the next one. Oh, that one looks good too. This one looks good too. 
So by the time you get to class, four of these donuts were gone. So what portion did you eat? What portion did you eat? You ate how many? You ate four out of how many? 12. And soon sure enough, we'll talk about simplifying. But right now, I'll leave it four out of 12. We didn't get to simplifying yet. Some of you said one third already, and you're right. But you ate four pieces out of the 12. What is left? What portion is left? What portion is left is what? Eight out of 12. And I will leave it like this for now and I'll get to simplifying soon. So that's what a fraction is. Now these fraction have a name, we call them what? Proper fraction, proper. Why we call them proper fractions? Because what? Because the top number is less than the bottom number. Good. Now, another example. You're starving. Really, really hungry. You eat for two days. Little Caesar, they have these little pizzas for five bucks. You can just grab them and take them. You bought two of them. Shouldn't be working a little, so I can't even cut the pizzas right. You bought two pizzas, each one cut into eight pieces. But you're starving. You ate all of this. And that wasn't enough, Jakim, because you're still hungry. Yeah. You reached into this one, you had two pieces. How much pizza did you eat? Pizza, P I Z Z A. Did you eat? You ate all of this, and you ate what? Two slices out of how many? Eight. Two eighths. Again, we'll simplify later. Don't worry about the simplifying. You ate a whole one and two out of eight. That's still a fraction, but that's known as what? mixed number so we can take right now we're going to learn how to convert between mixed numbers and improper fractions so let's look at that how do you go from mixed number Two, I'm going to call it improper because when I, do, I finish with the math, you're going to see the top is going to be what? Larger. Here's a mixed number. One and one-fourth. Five and two-thirds. Seven and one-six. Four and and two-fifth. I want to change these to improper fractions. Every one of them. You said improper? Improper. Oh, okay. Here's the thing. To get the top, what are you going to do? You're going to multiply the four times the one, Plus one. and add to it the one on the top. What's four times one? Four plus one? Five over what? What's the bottom? Four. That's five over four. That's why we call that improper because the top is bigger than the bottom. This one, the bottom is three. The top, three times five plus the two. What's three times five? Fifteen plus two? 17 over 3. 
this one. Six times seven plus the one. Six times seven, 42 and one, 43 over six. The next one, five times four plus the two. What's five times four? 20 plus two, 22 over five. That's how we go from mixed number to improper fraction. How do we do the reverse? How do we go from improper fraction to mixed numbers? So to go from improper fractions two mixed numbers. There is improper fraction f five and two seven, oh, that's mixed number. 52 over seven, 49 over six, 11 over 2, 19 over 5. All of these are improper fractions. How can I change these to mixed numbers? We divide them. What's 52 divided by 7? Seven? 7. 7 times 7 is what? 49. What's the remainder? three. So this number goes in the front. That's your seven. And what's left? Three over the seven. Forty-nine divided by six. Nine. Nine times six is fifty-four too high. 8, 8 times 6 is 48, right? So 8, 8 times 6 is 48. What's the remainder? 1, this one goes in the front. 8, and what's 1 over 6? The 1 here goes on the top. This one's always the bottom. 11 divided by 2, 5. 5 times 2, which is what? 10, what's the remainder? 1, there's your front number. 5 and 1 out of 2. 1 half. Nineteen divided by 5, 3. 3 times 5, 15, what's the remainder? 4, there's the front number. Three and what? Four over five. Yes. Everyone's good with going back and forth between the two? Now, what about equivalent fractions? How do we know if you have two fractions that are equal or not? Now, we didn't learn how to simplify yet. I don't know how to simplify yet. So how am I going to know if these fractions are equal to each other? If I gave you one third and four sevens, I said, or four eleven. Are these two equal to each other? Can you just say what well, number you can divide them both by? Well, you can't simplify these, right? Yeah. 
So one way to know if they are equal to each other or not, you do cross multiply. What's one times 11? 11. What's three times four? 12. Right? Notice I wrote the 11 on this side. Why? Because th when I multiply these two numbers, the one and the 11, I put the answer where the top number is. When I multiply the three and the four, between them the top number is the four, I put the answer here. Are these numbers equal? No, they're not equal. As a matter of fact, I can tell you which one's bigger. 12 is bigger than 11. So this one is bigger than that. We don't have to know which one's bigger today, but that will come later. Are they equal? No, they're not equal. Now, if I look at 2 fifth and 6 15. Let's cross multiply. 2 times 15. Notice the 2 is the top number. 2 times 15 is what? 30. I'll put the 30 where the top number is. 5 times 6. 6 is the top number. I'm going to put the 30 there. Are they equal? Yes. If I said, I'm giving you this number, can you find two fractions or a fraction that will be equal to this? Can you tell me another fraction that will equal to this one? One seventh. Yes. Yes. Because what you did there is, well, you know what? Let me multiply the top and the bottom by one number. You chose a two. Let's multiply the top and the bottom by two. What's two times one? Two. What's two times seven? Fourteen. Somebody else might say, you know what? I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 3. What's 3 times 1? 3. What's 3 times 7? 21. Somebody else might say, you know what? I like the number 5. I have 5 kids. That's my favorite number. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 5. What's 5 times 1? 5. What's 5 times 7? 35. All these are equal. One thing about fractions, if you multiply the top by a number, you have to multiply the bottom by what? The same number. If you divide the top by a number, you got to divide the bottom by what? The same number. And that's why I put this one to talk about simplifying fractions. How do we simplify fractions? Divide. Yep, we divide them. Simplifying fractions. Earlier when I did some math, I said, don't worry about it, leave it the way it is. There's color problems, I said, just leave them. Don't worry about simplifying. Where was it? Eight over 12, four over 12. I said, don't worry about simplifying yet. So let's go back and revisit these. I have a fraction that's 8 over 12, and I want to simplify it. I can divide the top and the bottom by any number. So what number I'm going to divide them by? Can I divide by 3? Can you divide the 8 by 3? No, so I can't use the 3. How about a 5? Can I divide the 8 and 12 by 5? No. 4, four or 2, right? Four. So if you did 4, that would be what? 2. If you do 4, what are you going to have? Three. So your answer will be what when you simplify it? Two over three. What happens if you didn't see the four? You said, oh, I can divide them by two. If you divide the four by two, what are you going to have? Four, and this is what? Six. If you write that answer, they will mark it wrong. Why? Because you have to simplify completely. And this is not complete. I can still divide the 4 and 6. I can divide them by 2. By 2, this is 2. By 2, this is 3. My final answer is 2 thirds. So when they say simplify a fraction, make sure you simplify it completely. 42 over 28. 
improper fractions. We studied divisibility last time. We said both of these numbers divisible by what? Oh, you good, I didn't see the seven. I was thinking of two actually. So I'll do it both ways. I'm glad you said seven. So I was thinking of the two, but I'll go with you. Seven by seven, this is what? Six by seven, this is what? Four. Can you simplify again? By two, this is what? Three by two, this is what? Two, that's three over two. And there is nothing wrong with this fraction. You can leave it improper. The only time you want to change it to a mixed number when this is change it to a mixed number. If they don't tell you that, leave it alone. Now, when I looked at this, and I'm glad you chose that one, I was thinking dividing by two. So if I did divide by two instead of seven, I will have what? 21 over what? 14. Now I look at them and say, can I simplify anymore? Both are divisible by what? Seven? three, two. It's the same answer. So which one you start with doesn't really matter. If you simplify completely at the end, your answer should be the same. Forty-two eighteen. Again, quickly, I know these numbers are divisible by two. The last digit is even. I don't want to kill myself. By two, this is what? 21 by 2, this is 9. So you divide it? Yep. Can I divide anymore? Can I can I divide it by 2 so far. Uh, they both have to be divisible by 2, right? That's the same number. Now, both of these, the 21 and 9, you can divide them by what? 3. three. three. Can't divide by 4. Those by 3, this is what? 7. By 3, this is 3. That's seven over three. And again, it's improper fraction, but that's fine. That's how we simplify fractions. Couple more pieces in <coughs> fractions here, then we're done with them. Are we good with this, everyone? Can you compare? That means tell me which one is bigger, not equal. Compare 7 over 15 and 4 over 9. Well, I can't really compare them because why? The bottom numbers are different. Let me leave that problem for a second. Leave it sitting there. Let's say I have a different problem right here. Let me just put a line here. And if I go compare 7 over 10 and 3 over 10. Can you look at them and tell me which one is bigger, which one's smaller? Which one's bigger? Seven over 10, why? Because the bottom is the same. If the top is bigger than the bottom, the whole fraction is bigger. If the top of this one is less than the top of this, the whole thing is less. So you can only compare them if they have the same number on the bottom. Well, now I got a problem here. These numbers are not the same. So can I make them the same? How? You divide, I think. No, you can't divide them. Well, you can do cross multiply, or we can try to make the bottom the same. How do you make the bottom the same? Well, I can take this one, the 7 over 15, and multiply the bottom by 9 and multiply the bottom of this by 15. 
So you multiply this by that number, you multiply this by this number. Well, wait a minute. If you multiply the bottom of this by 9, you're going to multiply the top by what? Nine. By 9. If you multiply the bottom by 15, you multiply the top by what? 15. So I'll cheat here. There's a calc I have with me. 7 times 9 is what? 63 over 15 times 9, 135. So this number is actually this. And this number is going to be 60. 4 times 15 is 60. Now let's look at them. The bottom is the same. Which one is bigger, 63 or 60? That means this one is bigger than that, which means this one is bigger than that. So 7 over 15 is bigger than 4 over 9. What do we call the 135? The denominator? It's called a common denominator. It's common to both of them. So we got it by multiplying these two. Did we have to use the 135? No. I could have used a smaller number, actually. Notice the same example. The 715 and the 4 over 9. Instead of that 135, which is a big number, I said, you know what? Let's make the bottom both 45. How do you turn the 15 to 45? Multiply it by what? Isn't it by 3? If you multiply this by 3, I'll make it a 45. If I multiply this by 3, what do we have? 21. How do you turn the 9 to 45? You have to multiply it by what? How about 5? 5 times 9 is 45. You gotta multiply this by five. What's four times five? Twenty. Which one is bigger, twenty-one or twenty? Now, where did I come up with the forty-five, or how did I come up with the forty-five? That's next class. That's called the least common denominator. Forty-five is called the least common denominator, the smallest one. How do you get it? Next class. Yes. There was a question there. So I chose the 45 because I know that's the first one. I just put it there without showing how I came up with it till next time. But what I'm going to show you actually is how do you find... Did we do the... Tr oh, we did the least common multiple, right? Last time? Oh, I'll show you that now then. Ah, I forgot we did the least common multiple. I was about to do it right now, but we covered that last video, last class. So how do we find, when you have fraction, how do we find the first number that both can, you can divide it by 15, you can divide it by 9? So let me go back to this. I forgot we covered that. Same problem. That 45, you're wondering where that 45 came from. How did I think of that number? I'm going to do the least common multiple, which is from last video, of 15 and 9. 15 is what? 5 times 3. Are these prime numbers? Yep. Yes. So 15 is 1, 5, and 1, 3. The 9. The 9 is what? 3 times 3. That's 2 of them. Remember what the LCM is called. It's the multiplication of all the different factors. My different factors are what? 3 and 5. And each of them is raised to its own highest power. What is the highest power of 3? 2. 3 squared, which is what? 9. 9 times 5, which is 
45. So that is the first number that you can divide it by 15 and by 9. That's how I came up with that number. Except here, I don't call it LCM. We call it LCM in the last video because now these numbers are what? Bless you. Denominators, so we call it what? Least common denominator. So we change it from LCM to LCD now because these numbers are denominators. So you here find the least common denominator. That three is already inside that one. That's why you don't count it. There's two of them here. This has one, so I don't need that one. It's already there. So here is my 45. We said you got to multiply this by 3 to make it 45. That's by 3. That's a 21. I got to multiply this by 5 to make it 45. That's 20. And that's why we came up with 21 and 20. But the 45 is your least common denominator. LCD. I'll try a few more. What are we looking at time? Good, we still have a few more minutes. I'll give you a couple more, here we go. Which is larger? I have 13 over 24 or 11 over 16. Again, the fact the two numbers in the bottom are different, I can't just look at them and give you an answer. I have a feeling it's the 11 over 16, but I want to show you. So I'm going to find the LCD for the 24 and the 16. The LCD for the 24 and the 16. This is the 24. This is the 16. Let's do the tree here. 24 is what? 6 times 4? 8 times 3? 12 times 2? Whatever you want to use. Not a prime number. 2 and 3. The 4 is what? 2 and 2. All prime numbers. So how many 2's? 3 and how many 3's? 1. What is it? They're not prime. Prime number is the one you can't divide it. 6 you can divide it by 2. Yep, you have to use prime numbers, prime factorizations. 16. I can go 4 and 4. Neither one is a prime. 2 and 2. Prime numbers. 2 and 2. Prime numbers. What's the 16? 2 to the 4. And I'm done. All the way to prime numbers, Jamie. All the way. Now the LCD, if you remember, it's called LCM, is the multiplications of all the different factors. My factors are 2 and 3. So the multiplication of them. But each of them raised to its highest power. Now let's look at the 2. This one has a power of 3, this one has a power of 4. Which one are we going to use? The 4. Not combine them, it's on. The 3 is 1. Now I just got to do the math here. What is 2 to the 4th? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Count that. What's 2 times 2? 4, Four times 2? 8. 8 times 2? 16. This is a 16 times 3, which is what? 48. That's your LCD. That is the smallest number that you can divide by 24 and by 16. So let me take that number down. 
I'm going to take this number down now and write it over what? 48. And I'm going to make take this one down and put it over 48. Let's see. How many times the 24 goes into 48? Once. Twice. Twice. Wow. I don't think you gave me one correct answer this semester so far. I gave you two, actually. So I got to multiply this by two. If I multiply the bottom by two, you got to multiply the top by two. So what's 13 times two? 26. Good. <laughs> now we get it right. 16. How many times a 16 goes into 48? Three times. What's three times 11? Which one is bigger? 33 is bigger than 48. So the larger number is what? 11, 16. That's the biggest one or the bigger of the two. Maybe one more example. Let's change the question. Arrange these. Nine over 10, 23 over 30, and 8 over 15. Tell me which one is the smallest, the medium, the biggest. I got to find the LCD. And sometimes you can look at these numbers without doing the math. I know what the first number that I can divide it by 10, divide it by 30, and divide it by 15. Does anyone can look at them? Tell me what is that number that you can divide it by 10? Div no, nope. divide it by 30. You're going to divide it by 30. And divide it by what? By 15. Is there a number you can see that you can divide it by all of these? The first number? Can't. First, you can't divide the 2 by 15. You can't divide the 2 by 10. You can't divide the 2 by 30. It's a multiple. That's a factor. How about the 30? Thirty is the first number that you can divide by ten, by thirty, and by fifteen. So some people can look at them and see it. If you're not one of those lucky people, no problem. Take the ten, break it down. Prime factorizations, two and five, and you oh, five, and you're done with it. So one two and one five. Take the 30, 6 and 5. 6 can be broken down what? 2 and 3? So 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 5. Take the 15. 5 and 3, they're all prime numbers. So what's my LCD? It's the multiplication of all the different factors. I see a 2, I see a 3, I see a 5. What is the highest power of 2? It's 1 here, it's 1 here, that's a 1. How about the 5 or the 3? 1, 1, the power is 1. How about the 5? Power of 1, power of 1, power of 1, power of 1. 2 times 3, 6 times 5, 30. So let's write each fractions. Over 30 now. Let me change the 9 over 10. I will have to multiply this by what to make it over 30? Is it by 3? 3 times 10 is 30. What's 3 times 9? 27. Next one. 23 over 30. I don't have to change it. It's already over 30. No change here. Next one, 8 over 15. You want the bottom to be 30. 
That means I gotta multiply this by two. By two, this is what? 16. So which one is the smallest one? The last one, right? 16? So eight over 15 is the smallest one. Which one is the next one? 23 over 30. And which one is the largest one? 9 over 10. And now we arrange them from small to large. I'll stop here. And then